black and brown children happen to be the fastest growing demographic of children with food allergies, one. And secondly, we also happen to be the uh, least utilized of the tools. So we're not taking advantage of what's out there to improve quality of life. Excellent. So my name is Javier Avalin and I'm the founder and CEO of Allergy. We build emergency medicine and digital health solutions powered by artificial intelligence to improve the lives of more than 32 million Americans, just like myself, actually. Uh, today, I wanted to just kind of zoom into the shoes of what it looks like to feel, whether you're a patient with food allergies or you have a kid with food allergies, right? It kicks off with diagnosis first and foremost. Number one, this happens in a lot of different ways. Trial and error is where a lot of folks do it. You go to school, you go to daycare or work and figure out that you can't eat peanuts, whatever, right? From there, you have an ability to get escalated to an emergency room to kind of treat that anaphylactic shock with epinephrine. And eventually you're gonna get in front of the allergies, hopefully to kind of get a better sense of what are the, is the allergies that are causing the issue and how do we avoid that moving forward. Another challenge that you see beyond this screen is that black and brown children happen to be the fastest growing demographic of children with food allergies, one. And secondly, we also happen to be the uh, least utilized of the tools. So we're not taking advantage of what's out there to improve quality of life. And that becomes a problem as you see folks have been dying due to being unprepared, not knowing which ingredients are in their foods and not always keeping their life-saving medication with them for different reasons, whether it's the cost, whether it's the forgetfulness or just the sheer stigma of walking around with something that makes you feel different and just kind of stand out. And you may have not used your auto injector since you were 10, right? It can reoccur at any given point. And there's no cure for a food allergy on top of that, right? So your closest bet to a cure or to improving quality of life that is, is gonna be food allergy immunotherapy, whereby you're microdosing what you have an allergy to keep it simple. Let's say you wanna go from one peanut to 10 peanuts, so that cross-contamination doesn't cause an issue and you can eat with a little bit more freedom. As you can see, there's a lot of issues or challenges that is here, right? You have to maintain a certain level of adherence. And if you do fall off the adherence train, then you need to intervene with your allergist and there's not a lot of tools that support that cohesively. Secondly, you can't be too hot or too cold and there's a lot more to this. So we saw this problem, saw that it could be helpful to our allergy population that we're gonna sell the same device to. So we hit up the NSF, the National Science Foundation and built out a machine learning platform that's RP, RTM based that allows patients and caregivers to put in what's going on, how the therapy is going on a day-to-day -day basis, and why did you fall off? Whether you got tired, whether the kid just no longer wants to do it, there are a lot of different reasons. And with those behavioral health and real-world evidence inputs, combined with the clinical platform on the other side for your allergists and those folks, to better get a sense of when to intervene and also when to extend the platform or protocol, et cetera, that's what the platform of Ada is ultimately, right? We This is a patent pending product at this point. And we also have a machine learning algorithm that using the same math on a scale of one to 10, we want to know from John Doe to Jane Doe, who's more likely to be successful with this treatment and who should we spend our resources with from an allergist perspective. As you can see, we've achieved a 90% success rate during our phase one NSF grant. And we have a pending two year, $1 million grant to further this along and build out the algorithm. On the other side, you got to carry an auto injector at all the times with epinephrine, right? So we connected with the most ubiquitous device that everyone's been talking about, our, you know, our cell phones with a redesigned EpiPen or epinephrine auto injector. When our device is removed to be used during an emergency, it triggers an alert to what we call a care circle. So your mom, your dad, your spouse would know where you're at, what you're allergic to, and how to save your life. So we took an existing protocol that Al just put out there and just put it in software. Ultimately, we have a clear pathway towards regulatory approval because we're not the first auto injector to the market. And we're excited to share that we do have a pending term sheet out to a drug partner that has FDA approved products. So that's been something we've been working on for a while. So I will say this to our turn blue. We're really excited about that one. And secondly, we also have a device partner that's ready to move forward, working from R&D all the way to commercialization as well, right? And we're collectively excited uh, beyond this space because you're looking at over 220 million people worldwide that are impacted by severe food allergies and growing. And on the far left, you're kind of getting the sense of the economic damage per child in a household. We can talk to knock that down bit by bit. Now, my background extends from working in insurance uh, for family owned insurance agency, found out about tech, learned how to code, work for a health insurance and PBM and had another crazy idea to start this company. So from there, I found other like-minded, crazy, but audacious and very passionate individuals like Yue Wang from the University of Michigan. She's a lead UI UX designer, rock star. Dr. Lisa Lombard from the University of Michigan, or pardon me, Northwestern University previously, 
leads one of the or has previously led one of the top food allergy research organizations in the country. Most recently, I've served as a principal investigator for our phase one and upcoming phase two. I've served for fellowships with or upcoming fellowships with uh, Harvard, as well as Aspen Ideas and Ernest and Young as well. Beyond that, our technical partners on the device side and software side are coming up and we do have a regulatory uh, agent that y'all may know, one of the top in the country as well. We're excited, as mentioned, I will say it again, as mentioned, we have a couple of term sheets out. Uh, we would love to share more about that and what that can look and do to the industry. And we have a couple of additional patents that have hit the market um, all the way from China, all the way to the US. And we also have, as mentioned, patents specifically on the software and all the machine learning algorithm that we have this presented as well. We did really well with our internal testing of the device, which met the standards of what's currently available on the market. And we're thrilled for an upcoming partnership or a pilot partnership with a top three allergy care clinic in the country. So if you're an investor, we're gonna be closing this round in a little bit, right? We'd love to talk, to share, get some more feedback and let you know about our, more about the vision of creating a better world for folks with food allergies. Secondly, from a partnership standpoint, let us uh, show more about how the food allergy populations that you treat can be um, amplified, right? We have the ability to look at the data and by looking at different claims, get a better sense of where the opportunities are. And if you're a food allergy community member, we'd love to talk with you, help us spread the word to help make every moment count. And you can see all of my information listed here below. And thank you so much for your time. I look forward to your questions. Javier, thank you so much. Um, we have a question from the audience, Esther Dyson, um, asking a question specific about food allergies. Thought there were a variety of protocols for reintroducing certain foods into a person's diet. How successful are those strategies um, and how does this augment or support that? Oh, you're locked in. So that's literally oral immunotherapy, right? So ultimately the ability to essentially microdose what you have an allergy to, and that's gonna be your most commercially widely available tool for that. The challenge that is that there are some FDA approved products. However, it's all about adoption. Allergies typically are grinding up peanuts as an example, giving them in small doses. So that is the best bet towards it. And our software adds is the guardrails for your allergists that are new to onboarding this, as well as patients and caregivers that typically are not going to take advantage of a life-changing therapy like this as well. And when we think about um, hearing about epinephrine, right, you hear about the EpiPen and other things like that that are in the market. I mean, how do you really stand out and compete with the existing uh, tools that are in the market? 100%. It's all about portability and accessibility to medication. Um, black and brown children, especially Medicaid populations, tend to underutilize or get prescriptions underutilized in the utilization of prescriptions for EpiPens, right? And it's all about education, one, and I think we do that extremely well from a health equity perspective. Uh, secondly, for anything that's upcoming, if it's needle or not, you hope that they test on the right humans, you hope that they follow the same protocols of other folks, but thankfully we have a clear pathway and I believe that with the feedback we've gotten from the allergy community, um, we should have a clear pathway towards launching in the coming years as well. And Javier, you mentioned that um, one of the main asks here is around your capital raise. How much have you raised to date? Yeah, and sure. what are the plans for the raise for the next 12 to 18 months? Yeah, so to date we've raised just over $2 million. We're in the midst of a seed extension around that we'll be closing in the next quarter or so. Um, most of the capital is coming from most uh, recent cap table investors and strategics at this point. Um, with the round we or this raise, we aim to commercialize the software fully beyond our pilot make a couple of dents, commercialize and activate the partnerships that we've been kind of bragging about on the device side and start, you know, saving some lives. We're really excited about that and really starting to uh, list through the different allergies that have been in our inbox about ones that are coming out on the software side, getting pilots out through the Southwest as well as Michigan based upon where we're at as well. Thank you.